Welcome to the world's top ranked fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. Now, in this episode, we answer lots of fitness and health questions asked by listeners like you, but we open it up with introductory portion where we talk about current events, studies, and we essentially have a lot of fun. By the way, if you want to follow along the podcast and skip forward to your favorite parts, go to mindpumppodcast.com, mindpumppodcast.com, or you can listen from beginning to end like you're supposed to. Here's what we talked about in today's episode. I open up by talking about my all my basically my leg workout and why I felt like a shaky fool after the end of that. That was tough. Yeah, baby giraffe. Then we talked about mindset and how important it is for success and fitness and other things. Uh, we talked about Avatar 2, 3, 4, and 5. Apparently, they're already all... Yeah, he blew his whole wad. That's crazy. Then we talked about Disney's layoffs. That's kind of sad. I talked about the gut health properties of Olipop sodas. No joke. Olipop makes sugar-free sodas with compounds that are good for your gut health, like prebiotics and other compounds that help uh, heal your gut. I love their stuff. It tastes amazing. My favorite flavor is the strawberry vanilla. It's incredible. But they have no, like, root beer. They have root beer. They have cola. They have many other flavors. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a huge discount. Check them out. Go to drinkolipop.com. That's drink, O-L-I-P-O-P.com. And then use the code MINDPUMP for 15% off. Then I talked about how I'm going to take a break off social media, even though I enjoy trolling people on political pages. Oh, we'll miss you, Sal. I'll trigger you guys all day long. Uh, then we talked about a study on smart supplements. Apparently, a lot of supplement companies are putting stuff in their products that's not on the label. And other companies are saying they have stuff in the bottle that they actually don't. You uh, sneakies. Crazy. Now, we only work with companies that provide third-party testing, companies that value your safety and your health, like Legion. Legion's products are clean and potent and have exactly what they say they have inside of them. Legion makes some of the best performance-enhancing supplements out there. They make pre-workout supplements and protein powders and much more. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a discount. Here's how you get the discount. Go to buylegion.com. That's B-Y-L-E-G-I-O-N.com forward slash mind pump. And then use the code mind pump for 20% off or get double rewards points. And then we talk about drones delivering organs. Then we got into answering the questions. Here's the first fitness question. What are good ways to phase workouts? Besides strength and muscle building, how else should I phase my workout? Next question. What are the best ways to grow your forearms? The next question, are there any tips to help get a better back pump? And the final question, how often should you mix up your cardio? Also, uh, we write some of the most effective workout programs you'll find anywhere. Remember, we are trainers first, fitness influencers second. For over two decades, all we did was train clients. Word. We know how to train people. We know what works. We know how to write workouts. It's not just flashy uh, social media stuff. These are workouts that actually work. Just go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. That's maps, M-A-P-S, fitnessproducts.com. Go on there and find the workout that best suits you. Find the one that's best for your goals, the one that'll train your body the best based off of your experience and what you're looking to accomplish. By the way, all the programs have modifications for at-home workouts with just a dumbbell, so you don't even have to have gym access. But if you have gym access, we do have workouts that include things like cables and machines. All programs come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Follow a MAPS program and see what it's like to actually do an effective workout and not just the flashy one that your fitness influencer wrote who has no business writing workouts. Again, that's at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Dude, today's uh, the first time in uh, maybe years I did a dedicated leg workout. Like just legs. Just legs. Like yeah. I, I haven't done like map split style. Now how- Woke up this morning. Is that you're all bow-legged? But, yeah, dude, yeah. that's yeah. exactly why. So you just got out of an old Western? I yeah. usually, I don't, I typically don't do more than four or five sets for legs in one workout because I do full body and I work them out so frequently. But this workout was- Let's see. It was twelve sets uh, for legs, not including calves. Oh boy! Yeah. And, and I and I knew this going into it, and I said, okay, I'm going to keep the intensity low and the weight light because I'm not used to this. Whatever. And mm. dude, doesn't matter. You know what I look mm. like at the end of it? 
a giraffe that was just born. You ever watch videos of that? Yeah. When they're like, now are you? That was me, dude. Are you okay? So, and this happens to me all the time. And so I'm curious of both you guys. When when you're going through your workout, right? Because there's a lot of times I think most of us are like this, right? So you 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 know what you're gonna lift this day. It's like, oh, it's leg day. I'm gonna do probably 12 sets. These are the exercises. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you you formulated the workout in your head before you got there. Do are you the type of person that because you've already formulated it, you committed to it, you're gonna follow through and execute no matter what? Or will you go like you can feel that I'm already gonna be really sore from these first eight <laughs> sets? So you stop. Start backing out. Yeah. So so here's what happens with that level of awareness, Adam. Mm. <laughs> that doesn't kick in in the middle of the workout. Oh, it That's, does it for you? Yeah. No. You know what I did is instead I tried to negotiate with my ego. Mm. <laughs> this I is me see. looking back. Yeah. What right? does that look like? This is the negotiation. Just go easier. Just go lighter. You'll yeah. you can finish this. Take your time. But just take weight off the bar and go mm. easier. And I just kept. You know, I did it. I finished it. And then again, I walked in. <laughs> yeah. Jessica's like, ah, you all right? I'm like, I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It depends on what mood I'm in for the most part. Like, I'll, I'll go either way with that. Like, if I'm like hell bent and determined, like I feel like I've been slacking, then you know that overrides my rational decision making process. Uh, versus if I'm kind of in a calm state going in, I usually, you know, will feel it out more. This is why our, you know, if our audience ever wonders why we're always hammering the, you know, you know, work out because you love yourself and don't punish yourself because we're all guilty of still doing it. Totally. <laughs> Yeah. We're, we're still guilty I, of. I love myself. That's why we talk about it. You know, I want to be open and honest. No, it's. A, it, I think it's a. It's a true struggle, and I think you'd be lying to yourself if you don't have those moments when you go to the gym where you feel like I need to do this because I haven't been. Like I, I, I feel that right, Justin. Where it's like I haven't been very consistent, so. I'm pushing through this workout no matter what, uh -huh. even though my trainer brain is so in tune with my body that I can tell when I'm on X amount of sets and it's like, oh yeah, I'm so, I'm going to be sore tomorrow no matter what. And then I still keep going. Oh, so it's so, yeah. And I walk in and Jessica's like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, <laughs> that was, uh, I might've done a little too much. We'll see. We'll see how I feel tomorrow. But you know, there's nothing worse than the feeling from a slightly too hard leg workout. I swear to God, I could train any body part that way. Oh, it's so uncomfortable. And it's not a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Legs, it's uh, yeah. it's just not. It's it reminds some me. Some damn hips. That's oh, what it is. Bro, I remember when I was a kid, when I would do a hard leg workout back when I, that's what I thought you had to do. Uh, you pretty much you could write off the whole day. Like if I worked out at, at 10 a.m., <laughs> that means that that's it. And then the rest of the day, I'm watching TV. I'm gonna lay down. Yeah. Now, are you are you are protein. you back to? Because for quite some time now, you have abandoned the back barbell, the barbell back squat. Are you back to uh, back squatting? Or are you are you still front squatting right now? And then I'm gonna start incorporating back squats uh, back into the workout. Now, now, is this the longest you've been away from that before? It is. It is the longest I've ever been away from from doing back squats consistently because I'm re I was really trying to work on the, the right to left discrepancy and build some more mobility and stability because, uh, it, you know, my back is essentially, if you look at my whole career of working out myself, it's pretty much bulletproof. I've done so much deadlifting and so many things. My back almost never gets hurt. And then all of a sudden I started to get like a little bit of back pain, which never happens for me. And I said, okay, before this becomes a big problem, Let's focus on what might be, you know, causing it, which is mobility and maybe some right to left uh, discrepancies. So it has been a long time, but now I'm going to start incorporating it. Now, one of the things for me that I love is that my upper legs, at least not my calves, but my upper legs tend to respond really well. So uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see if I get the... <laughs> Somebody DM me that they, they think that's because we, we don't like leg curls that much. Some trainer, some trainer sent me a DM. leg curls. Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? Yeah, yeah, because of the gastroc getting kicked in when you do a leg curl and you lock when you lock out in that position to do lying leg curls that it's getting it's getting some work in there. And they they said because we we don't really tout that exercise or we talk actually about the benefits of deadlifts and how lying leg curls is almost a waste of time if you're doing like you Dude. if you're progressing your deadlifting and so they attribute that to the lack of, of calf growth that you and I have. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just want to hit you from every angle, don't they? I, I, well, that was the first time anyone had ever said that before. I don't I don't know if I responded to. So shout out to whoever I'm talking to. I don't know the hell the, <laughs> yeah. who the hell they were. There's a, yeah, there's a I did get a, I got a little chuckle out of it though. I did. Yeah, no. 
No, it's not the leg curls. Yeah, maybe, I, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna say, start. Yeah, start doing <laughs> test them. Test it out. Yeah, that is one of those exercises though that cracks me up. It's like people are like, I'm gonna build my hamstrings, so they do seated leg curls, lying leg curls, one legged leg curls, yeah. just all leg curl yeah, like exercises. Kickbacks, yeah. Yeah, and it's like th- those exercises don't even come close to your just your stiff legged deadlift. Hey, I'll be know? I'll be the first to admit I was guilty of that for many years in my lifting and training. It wasn't until I really got on the I never have have like cared about you know increasing my deadlifting weight until we met until the until the three of us all got together and we started training together and Sal was so proud of his deadlift I wanted to knock him off his hill so bad that's not what happened I, I inspired you <laughs> I, 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 yeah I don't know I see it the other way yeah. uh, I definitely see this little competitive so, peacocking yeah, going on so I, de- I definitely I definitely wanted to knock him off his hill uh, and that's just a, and, and, and all fun right like yeah, I mean I have that's a good all, time. all the yeah. respect in the world for him and b- before mind pump even started you know Sal and I were he was getting shredded for a, a photo shoot and I was getting shredded for for getting on stage and so we used to com- compete like that so yeah so for me I had never I had never programmed for myself uh you know to increase my deadlift strength it was never a focus I've always been such a bodybuilder focused mentality going into lifting that I was always chasing pumps. I never lifted below five repetitions. Like if I ran a strength cycle, it was uh, very short lived and it wasn't really, it was still, I was still heavily focused on technique and form. And I prided myself on my mechanics so much that I would never get a little bit sloppy just to lift more weight. And so I never really programmed to get really strong and see how much I could lift. And you know, it was then when I started deadlifting on a, a very regular basis. I was deadlifting at least two times a week, sometimes three, and uh, very consistently. Uh, that I just I stopped doing all those, you know, lying leg curls and seated leg curls, and it was just because. So when you put so much energy and focus in a powerlifting program, uh, or getting good at, at deadlifting, squatting, bench press, the main movements. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of energy and effort to to prep for those lifts and to spend time on improving them and look at your sticking points and blah 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 blah. And so when I got when I started to really increase my deadlift, you know, I think I started like around three hundred pounds. So to see it get over five hundred something pounds and then to come back after about a year of lifting like that and then go on and and do lying leg curls. It blew my mind. I remember you saying, like, oh, you, it blew my you mind. You were like doing the whole stack on oh. an exercise you'd always done. In, in, in lying leg curls were hard for me. It was like one of those exercises, like, you know, it, I was never really, really consistent with it. And then when I'd be consistent, I might increase like five or 10 pounds at a time. And I was, it's just an awkward, you know, kind, oh. kind that, of exercise. That was just one of those poses that puts you in this weird, like, Hollywood photo shoot kind of thing where you're just laying down and you're like, hey. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, like a little <laughs> cheerleader pose like I was not into that I was not either and and I for the longest time it was uh something that was in the routine uh and I just like you alluded to I did the the standing donkey kickbacks the lying leg curls the seated leg curls I mean th- those were all in the routine consistently and then I intermittently did you know deadlifts or stiff legged deadlifts but uh, not consistently and not with the intent of getting strong at them and when I did, uh, the carryover into all those other bullshit exercises was crazy. I mean, I'd spent 10 plus years doing all those movements, seeing myself incrementally move up, you know, five or 10 pounds on the stack every couple of years mm-hmm. to all of a sudden like doubling my strength. And I hadn't even done any of those exercises. Isn't it wild? Yeah. It's really crazy. If people just realize that some exercises are like worth a hundred points and other exercises are worth one point. Right. Yeah. And so you could do, you, you can know, distribute all those points. Uh, like you have so many more to pull from. It's such way. a yeah. big, it's such a big deal. You know what I want to know though, back in the, cause this is back in the day before uh, we really started the podcast and you and I, I got into this like ego war. It was fun, right? Where we'd trade pictures about, you know, who's more shredded or mm-hmm. whatever. And I could just, now that I know Justin, I can only imagine <laughs> what he must have been thinking when oh he, Adam's God. getting, you know, his phone goes off and he opens it up and it's a picture of me and my shirt off. I'm like, yeah. Bro. You know? <laughs> I was thinking thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I had opinions. You're like, no, what's happening I kept to my them friend to myself, Adam? but, you know, it was like, <laughs> Justin was team I was Adam. Laughing. Back then. Justin was, I was team, team Adam. Adam. I had Justin, to be there. Yeah, he was, yeah. He was my guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was team Adam back then. Yeah, but then, so, you know, to Justin, well, we did not. this guy with we, the, yeah. But Justin is not the kind of guy to send a picture of himself flexing to his friend. No. Hell no. I've never, yeah. I haven't even had friends that 
had done that. This was a whole new experience. <laughs> That's what I'm yeah. saying. I didn't know how to deal with it. And I would love it. I'd laugh because I love, you know, one of my favorite things about competition isn't the competition itself. That's fun. I like that. But I enjoy the 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 fun around it, the shit talk and the teasing and the back and forth. Oh, I love that part. Yeah. That part's so well, fun. Well, I I appreciate what it brings out of me. I, I've yeah. I have a competitive streak in me and um and I and I'm a I'm a good loser. If I lose, I you know, like in it, it, for me it's like I wouldn't have pushed that far if there was no competition for it. Just sure. like I just like I know I would have never taken my body to the level that I took it uh, as far as uh, how low of body fat percentage and building a physique without knowing that I had to compete against other yeah, people. Sure. It's just I I didn't the, – the level of dedication, sacrifice, consistency that it takes to compete at that level is just so high that uh, there's so many other priorities in my life that if I didn't have like a serious goal about it, yeah. I wouldn't stick to it like that. Well, I've that. noticed we've all had that in common, even if it's not sports-related and we kind of bring that within business. It's like we kind of just have our eye on somebody else that might be doing well or might have something that we can squash, and, and we do. Yeah. Because it's fun. It's like that's you got to have a target ahead of you uh, to, to shoot for. Oh, it's fun. I mean, you know, but you really, and I had this conversation uh, with uh, one of my cousins the other day, younger cousin, and so every once in a while we get on the phone and I kind of do some mentoring with him. And I did talk to him about the difference between really loving uh, to win and the, and loving to grow, you know, uh, falling in love with growth. Because if you fall in love with growth, you're still going to like winning. But when you lose, you're going to come out uh, better, you yeah. know, rather than loving winning so much that when you lose, it's devastating. And no, it sucks. you learn from it every single time. You totally do. Well, yeah, I yeah. think that's why I think it's a it's even more dangerous to be somebody who just hates to lose, right? There's there's, there's people that will admit that, right? Oh, that, yeah. that like uh, you know, have you ever been asked yeah, that? Question, I hate to lose more you, than I love you, to win. Right? Do you would you do you love to win more or do you hate to lose more? There's a lot of people that would admit they hate to lose. Mm -hmm. And to, my uh, what I would say to those people is like you. That's the people that you have to really like look at. Okay. If you hate to lose, it's hard to also look at that as an opportunity for growth because you hate it so much. So yeah. I, I embrace that. Like I've sure. that's part of the journey, right? Part of the journey is losing, is failing, and it's the getting back up and then it's the recovering and the learning from it that makes it so fun and makes it so great because you 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 get reminded that it's not easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't like there's nothing I've ever done that came easy that I think I really love. Like if it was There's no meaning. No. It has to be challenging. Right. I mean, can you, I I I recall moments in my life where losing turned me into such a better person. I remember the first time I walked into uh Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu school. It was over here in San Jose, Claudio Franca. Could, you know, <laughs> shout out to them. And I was in my early 20s and probably, I don't know, 215, so I was pretty big at the time. A little bit of a background in judo, and I, and I knew somewhat of what jiu-jitsu was, but I'd never trained in it. And I went in there open-minded, and I said, you know, I have respect for martial arts. I've trained in martial arts in the past, so I know what technique can do. But I have a little bit of a grappling background. I'm a big guy, so let's just see what happens. And I remember I took the class. And then I went against one of the purple belt instructors who was not even a, he it wasn't even a, a like an athletic guy. He was this kind of skinny, hundred and I don't know fifty pound dude. Ended up becoming a good friend of mine. And he's like, "Yeah, you can spar with me." And I I remember in five minutes just you know just getting my ass kicked, mm. just getting my ass kicked. And I remember after the first time I tapped out. That I thought I said to myself, okay, now it's on. Like I remember thinking, okay, that first one I gave you, because yeah, I yeah. went kind of easy. Now it's on. You're not going to get me. And it was like a I was like a typewriter the whole time. I was tapping out. Yeah. And I remember leaving that. And I well, for, I, first off, I signed up right on the right there on the spot. I'm like, yeah. that is it. I want to learn this. And you know, imagine if I went because I remember people would come in and sign up who couldn't deal with losing. They would come in and they'd get their asses kicked and they'd never come back because yeah. it couldn't. They couldn't process the they fact that they- could be the best immediately. Yeah. What a, yeah, what a terrible, terrible place mindset. to be in. There, yeah. you, you'll never get anywhere if you always have that attitude. So that, you know, some of my best, personally, my best moments were just losing or getting my butt kicked or being surprised that I mm. thought I was going to do well yeah. and losing and then sitting back and being motivated by that, you know. Well, to, speaking of losing, I think, and this, this is a weird transition, but 
um, basically, you know how the Avengers like overthrowed like Avatar's like overall sales of all time. Oh yeah, yeah, in the box office. So I guess like I, I remember reading somewhere too, like there was going to be a, a a whole schedule of like four other follow up movies. So they've for already, Avatar, yeah, they've already shot all three of them. And they're working on the next one, but so one of them got moved. It was supposed to be 2018 was the first launch, and they have like it's scheduled now for I think it's the 18th of December for this 2020 for Avatar 2. Then you have in t- 2021 you have Avatar 3. Then you have 2024 Avatar 4. The 2025 Avatar 5. Just boom, 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 boom. Wow, wow, they crazy that far. What a bet, though. Yeah, he's totally betting on it. Like because everything was there in place, they could save on costs. They have the green screen. Everything's green screen, so it's like you know to have things, um, you know, all set in place and not movable. It was like uh, you know very interesting strategy. Wait a second. So you mean that those have all been shot already? Yeah. yeah. Oh, like shit. three of them have been shot. Like two of them were were finished, I believe, and one of them they're still shooting. I hope I hope the second one's good. <laughs> I know. Otherwise, <laughs> what are they going to do with the they're, rest? They're yeah. screwed. After did you yeah. guys like that movie? You know, I, I liked it for the visual effects. I thought the story was kind of eh, but yeah. uh, you know, it the, that's the thing is like he's always like he was. I read somewhere too that he was so mad when Star Wars came out because he's like, oh, that was my idea. Like he had like this grandiose idea for creating a whole another universe and like making the sci-fi movie out of it. And so this is sort of his answer to that. I thought level. the imagination and creativity that went into creating the planet and then the animals and the plants, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. The story was a little bit annoying to me because I, I'm not going to lie. I, yeah, I know it's, that it's the, very fern I, I, Yeah, I know the good guys were the Avatar people or whatever the whatever they were called, and the bad guys were the mm. soldiers or whatever. But I, part of me was like, when the dude sold out humans, you know, I yeah. remember thinking like, man, what a piece yeah, of I'm, shit! I'm kind of, <laughs> <laughs> you just got them all killed, dude. Like, <laughs> can't you go through the yeah, ranks? What about and, Team Human? Yeah, yeah. can't you go? Oh, pro- you're gonna go all like alien on us? Yeah, just because yeah. you got some. You just because you got a little Sahelu like action. <laughs> you know, you're just gonna <laughs> abandon the human race. A little, a little blue tang and yeah. you got uh, you know, you a little go. blue tang. <laughs> that pissed yeah. me off. Yeah, well, I know, right? Hey, speaking of the the Marvel though, Disney a huge layoffs, huh? Yeah, the parks. Wow, twenty. I think twenty something thousand people. Yeah. Was it? Th- I thought it was even more than that. It was a lot, right? Yeah, I mean, I yeah. I mean, you could kind of predict that happening. That's I'm expected. Sure that costs. That's expected because they were shut down for so long. Yeah. And then when the reopening, did they reopen it all? No, no, uh, no. They, they did in Florida, I believe. Oh yeah, maybe Florida, Disney, but, yeah, but, world, not in California. but not California. So. Would you now? Would you guys go back if they were open? Um. I wouldn't right would, now just because my son is so young. It's kind of pointless for me. Like he's yeah. not going to remember anything at one years old. But we talked about like his two. His you know I will at two. Yeah. You know two or three I will for sure. I don't know yeah. with like no lines. You know like and just like limited. Maybe it was like twenty percent capacity. Mm-hmm. That might be awesome. Yeah. Wear a stupid mask, but you know you do your thing. Dude, I love Disney with little kids. Disneyland is a blast. Yeah. It's so uh, fun yeah. to see their expressions and what's going. on. I think on. it's cool. It as might be adult. awesome, it's, especially if you drink while you're there with your kids. You, yeah. get, uh, yeah. you know you know what I mean, right, Justin? Yeah, <laughs> yeah bro. I mean, look at me. Yeah. It's just it is. It's a good time. I really enjoy. it. I enjoyed. My sister did it. Wanted it for her thirtieth. Right. I think I've shared of that before on the podcast that uh you know she said uh, i told her i said what do you want to do for your 30th you know you tell me what we do and then we'll do it and she's like i want to i want to do disneyland i want to do and she had a connection with somebody who like you have uh like there's people that are like uh i forget what they're called but you have like a membership there yeah that you pay like, a, like the 33rd club yeah or something. yeah and if you you have access to like the, all the private underground you know bars that are inside there and restaurants that nobody else has access to you get like a a uh, of somebody who works there that takes you to the front of the line to mm. all the rides and it's like a it's just like a golf membership or whatever that you pay like a massive fee and then you have a monthly amount that you have to spend yeah so she had a connection with somebody she worked with uh for that and then we stayed at the you know we stayed at the cool rooms at the disneyland hotel and then uh did that for the day it was a blast dude and her birthday is the 31st so it was we were there for new year's right so we got to see the fireworks the they show they have the best fireworks oh, wow, they do cool. yeah no it was it was amazing and i hadn't been there so okay i'm a year older i'm 31 i hadn't been there since like 99 so back when i was like 17 years old in high school was the last time i had been to disneyland and I thought it was really funny that she wanted to do that as an adult. But man, it's a it's a cool. What what, it, what I forgot and I don't remember appreciating as a teenage boy was how well the businesses ran. 
Oh yeah. Oh, it's incredible. And how, I guess the, how friendly everybody is, like the on staff, like uh, that. That's always noticeable because it's just like it, they're just there when you need them. It's like, on a whole nother level. I, I went down a rabbit hole of like reading on like how they operate things, like everything from the you know the trash cans have underground yeah. tunnels, so you don't ever see anyone taking trash out. It go they shoot underground and it gets taken care of. Even the parking structure, how it all the the flow of that is so like brilliant engineered so you get right onto the freeway before mm-hmm. you know, like there's they, no like they have combustion. regular people in street clothes that actually work for the park that come behind and clean up behind people so it doesn't look like there's like tons of staff always around stuff like that but they're always keeping things clean mm-hmm. so you'll watch somebody who'll be like a kid will be walking and like he'll spill popcorn out of his hand and of course the family just keeps walking or whatever and then like all of a sudden you'll see some random person out of nowhere like come over and oh, I thought it was just <laughs> out of the Samaritan. bushes yeah no they, <laughs> I mean they just uh, the, the for service. little kids for little kids it's amazing. Once yeah. they get a little older, Universal Studios is a blast. Oh, yeah. Like the last time we went, uh, we went to Disneyland and Universal. Universal was a little bit more fun. Um, but when they're like under 10. I'll have to try that. Yeah, we're getting there. It's a to- uh, under 10. It's a total. When they're like three, four, five. Oh, man. Do you guys remember that year I took my daughter because I messed up and missed <laughs> yeah, a, That's when we first started the podcast. The father. Yeah, I yeah, missed dude. the father daughter dance and I felt so terrible. And then she goes, I said, all right, whatever you want. There was I'll a reason for that, though, wasn't there? I had booked a trip to uh to go out of the country way before I even knew the date of the father daughter dance. Yeah. So once it was booked, then they said, "Oh, it's on this date and I was already booked to go somewhere else and I felt terrible." So I told my daughter, "All right, whatever you want." You know, she's like, "Disneyland." I'm like, "Oh, all right, let's do this." <laughs> she knows what she wants. <laughs> yeah. Let's do this and yeah. it, it totally you know, totally worked. Yeah, last time I was there was when they just came out with that Star Wars uh, that's right. section which was amazing. Yeah, I love it. Dude, uh I got to I got to give some props to our sponsor Olipop. That stuff is legit besides the taste, it does taste amazing. It is really good for my gut. Yeah. It really is. Like I if I feel my gut is a little bit off or whatever, I drink that and then I feel so much better. Yeah, and the I mean the ingredients are legit that are in there, but uh, it's kind of weird that it's a it's like a soda that tastes good, right? No sugar, or whatever. It's all the same but, experience that you love from soda. It just has a totally different after effect. Yeah, you know? like a gut yeah. supplement is not usually a tasty treat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. So brilliant on that. I've changed my order of my favorites, right? So originally it was root beer, vintage cola, but I, you know. Uh, root beer still my favorite, yeah. but I really I'm starting to like that the vanilla strawberry. That's my favorite. Yeah, the that's ver- Doug and I's mm, favorite. Yeah, the strawberry vanilla is is definitely leapfrog the uh, vintage cola for me. So those are in that order for me. It's the root beer, the strawberry vanilla, and then the vintage. When cola. When I was a kid, uh, root beer I loved root beer, but I really Love liked those off like fruit flavor sodas like orange, grape, cherry coke, cherry strawberry. Like that was me. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. If I could have my choice. Those are the ones I, I never drank soda as a kid, but every once in a while my dad would, you know, you know all of a sudden feel like being a nice guy. And so he'd say, you guys want to yeah. get a soda? And I'd get the one that would turn my face some. Oh, I was big in the root beer floats and the sarsaparilla. And the, you know why? Because it was, you'd get one of those and you could say you're drinking a beer, mm. you know? <laughs> it was the same thing. Like you said, you're at parties, like, yeah. you know, and you have to hold like a bottle or something because yeah. it's cool. Like I felt as a kid, like I was like an adult. You, I'm, I'm drinking a beer. Do you remember like, tasting beer for the first time? And how shocked that you were! Oh, I was like, "This, this is terrible!" I couldn't yeah. believe it. <laughs> I remember I see you know, everybody yeah. drinking beer. I'm like, "Can I have some?" You know, my uncle's like, "Sure, all right." Here well, you go. The, the funniest like, thing, the, I thought he played a trick on me. I'm like, "This is not beer." Yeah, yeah nobody the, likes this garbage. I'm like drinking it, and I'm like, "Here," and they're like handing it over to us. Like my first party with beer, and I took a sip, and I'm like, "Oh, I don't really like that," but I just like drank a little bit of it, and they're like, "You know, like you want another one?" I'm like, "Oh, I'm not even really that thirsty." <laughs> and they're like, "No, no, no, you want more." Or beer. I'm just like, oh, they're like, you have to keep drinking these, you know, oh. to feel anything. And I'm like, so oh, disgusting. I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember what was the beer when you guys were kids? What was the beer of choice? Do you remember? Well, we didn't mean like like when you're when your yeah, buddies like, are out drinking. Yeah, when you were when, the, when you were getting beer when you were when you were shoulder oh, you tapping. Get the cheapest and, sh- yeah, beer natty, in the world. Natty Ice, dude. Yeah. That was oh, yeah. yeah, Natty Ice. I'm was, trying to think what Thunderbird beer or some weird stuff. What? Like, I don't remember. Do you, you ever do the 40s? Like I was, I yeah. drank those Mickey's. You mean Ed, Ed, Edward Forty Hands? Yeah, where you duct tape your hands. Yeah. 
tape your hands to the Mickey's. <laughs> what a terrible, That's so stupid. First of all, it's a frat boy. One forty uh, is enough to get you smashed. Yeah, you yeah. would tape one in each hand. You might as well. Get, oh my god! Call yeah, the ambulance nightmare. right now. Yeah, yeah. we'd do that. We we take the train to go see like a baseball game up in San Francisco or something. We drink one of those forties and just get smashed. Oh, yeah. Just, uh, isn't it? Isn't it amazing? As a young kid, that's your goal, right? Your goal is to get to that level. And then when you get older, your goal is, can I drink and not? And not. Yes. Yeah, and right. not have that feeling. Well, the window right. of fun, I feel like, with alcohol, when you're when you're younger, it's, it's a pretty good window. Like, you could drink all night and enjoy most of it. But as you get older, the window gets smaller and there's like a... People start telling you what you did. Yeah. yeah. There's like like an hour or two of fun followed by, I need to go to bed now, I'm tired. You know what I mean? It's like there's not that much time anymore, which is kind of crappy. Dude, I I think I'm going to unplug from uh, media for a little while. Oh, yeah. that's probably a good idea. How yeah. are you going to do this? Well, first of all, you know, and, and you, know, I don't you look want, a little tired today. I don't want to talk too much about out. it uh, now, but uh, that debate the other night uh, just, uh, I mean, I, I couldn't sleep last night. It just stressed yeah. me out. That was this a whole soul thing, suck. This whole thing is so damn stressful. And one of my favorite things to do right now, which is not good for me, but it's hilarious, is to troll people on Instagram on political posts. This is just, I'll just drop a bomb in the comments yeah. and leave. Yeah. And an hour later, I come back and there's 30 comments of people fighting under what I said. Yeah. And it's, it is fun, but it's damaging. Uh, it's yeah. starting to damage me now. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I, I, so I think I'm going to do like a fast or something where I'm just off for a little while. Yeah, and change I, my perspective. I started unfollowing a lot of the political type uh, pages and things that would show up in my feed just because it was like getting overbearing. Like especially right now because it's ramping up even more uh, because of debates and like we're getting close to the election and I'm just like, oh my god, I can't take. It's like hate, scare, hate, hate scare, hate, scare, hate, scare, scare, hate, ah, scare. Ah, ah, ah. You know, yeah. you, nothing like- positive, nothing uh, that. For the American people. Though. I feel like yeah. half the stuff that people post too is just is to try and stir controversy up and then it's just shit talking back and forth. I mean, so half. Like, yeah. That's it, being generous. I Well, no, I know. That's a hundred percent. It's just, it's become such a, a, a toxic environment. I don't know. I mean, you, you saw, you called this a while back and I, I disagreed. I might, I'm beginning to agree more that, you know, I think more and more of uh, at least America, I like to think is, is waking up. Uh, to how toxic it can be, how important it is to detach. And so, you know, it may become a more trendy thing to to be off of it. You mm-hmm. know, right now, the last really the so. last decade, it's been so cool to be on it, right? To be a, a, a influencer on Instagram or Twitter or now TikTok. And, you know, that was something that a lot of these kids were aspiring to be like. And I think as they age and get older and see some of the unintended consequences from being sucked into that world... I think more and more people are becoming aware and maybe we will see some of this. Yeah. You know, some people starting to maybe some of the cooler kids saying like yeah. I'm going to take a break from this shit. I'm not going to be More of these though. influencer in the wild pages to 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 kind of show people what they look like in real life when they're doing this dumb shit. Can like, I just tell uh, you please. Some I saw that I was on there and there was I love that page. There was a, yeah, it's no, so, I was, no, it's so great. Oh no, you guys you showed me Adam. Yes. There was like these this these two girl, girls and at the, the beach and the daughter. And they're like like dancing and strip dancing and showing their butts off and taking pictures and there's like a family there you know what I'm saying with the little kids just yeah. at the beach and yeah. they're just oblivious they, they're not looking around or nothing it's like we gotta get this video out because oh, my fans need it well it's become that it's just become so normal yeah. I mean it's become so normal I, it, I'm i actually now it's so weird to me to think this that it, how fast this transition happened right I remember like like clockwork the first time I saw kids doing like TikTok and thought what the fuck are those kids doing over there, right? And then being, <laughs> being told by somebody younger, right, that's that's more hip to everything. That's TikTok, going. man. Right, right, tell me what it was. To now, I don't think I can go anywhere in public and not see somebody doing an Instagram story, a TikTok video, yeah. talking to the camera. Could you imagine? You'll it, see it in the next debates. Yeah, you know? I like, probably. Like, doo, 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 you know, who could dance better? Yeah, yeah. he's an asshole. Yeah. Racist. <laughs> Racist. Okay, whatever. Oh. Could you imagine going, just back in the, to the 90s, early 2000s, could you imagine walking down the street and seeing someone hold a disposable camera facing it themselves? <laughs> No, you know, I would slap that other hand. Like, what is that guy doing? Yeah. Why is he taking pictures of himself? <laughs> so self centered and weird. Yeah. Yeah. No, luckily for yeah, whatever happened to shaming. Yeah. yeah. No, exactly. Let's Luck- bring it back. Th- luckily, you know, my, my wife is super self aware about that kind of stuff and she'll totally just turn it off. And then she's pretty cool about me doing it, but she'll be like, hey, can you listen to that somewhere else? It's real negative. And so then I'll go into the other room. 
And then I start to realize, like, yeah, why am I listening to this negative garbage oh, yeah. all the time? You know, oh, I, Katrina has it's rough. Never been on any of it, dude. It blows my mind that she's she's been she's never been on Facebook, never been on Instagram, never been on Twitter. None Smart. of that. She don't use. She's got none. a lot to hide, huh? <laughs> 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 a lot of guilt. To, that's probably really what it is, right? Yeah. I don't want nobody to find yeah, me. Yeah, she's like, Fuck, I don't want Adam to find my past. I have a friend sure. like that. I'm yeah, like, hey, you stay off. You yeah. know, you stay off grid. I mean, I really believe it's what's uh, has uh, for sure saved our relationship. I mean, I can't imagine mm. if she was uh, as sucked into it as I have been for the last five years. It would drive me crazy. It, it really would. So, yeah. uh, I'm and because of that, I'm very aware of you know the time because I have I, I have someone who I can see right next to me who isn't constantly exactly. on it. It's a great reminder all the yes. time for me. Whereas yeah. I could see you know a couple young couple that's 22 years old and both of them are big into Instagram or TikTok or what that. I mean, how often do they sit in the same room together and just stare at their phone for an hour or two? I bet that happens all yeah. the time. Oh, dude. It's that like, can't happen in my house. Like, it's just, it, it would be so rude or obvious because it's Katrina's insanely not- Insanely rude. Yeah. So, like, I can't even do that. Like, I have to find- private time or my allotted time where I'm working on my phone and it's just expected of me outside of that time, I look abnormal in my family or my household yep. to be doing that. Oh no, Jessica put a basket. She hung a basket over the bathroom door and that's where you're supposed to put your phone now when you go to the bathroom. So there's a thing on Shark Tank mm. that got really popular and I think it, it so the, the concept, I, uh, I forget what it was called. Maybe Doug can find this, but it's a lock box. It's a clear t a Tupperware thing that has a, a timer lock on oh, it. Oh yeah, they did this for food yeah that's what it was originally for but i that heard was in that uh, um netflix documentary, documentary. yes yeah. it was oh was it yeah yes. the one that yeah social, net social, social uh, network dilemma. dilemma right social and dilemma. so it's been i know it's been used now for phones more than like anything else but i know originally it was like to keep you from snacking on certain yeah. food but i think a lot of people have transitioned into locking oh yeah like the, these little kitchen safe time lock things so i think like the number one usage for it now is like for cell phones put your cell phone in there lock it and yeah. then uh, and yeah. then panic yeah. for an hour or whatever yeah oh yeah no it's it's got to do something it's look at, i tell you what man it's weird it's this is here's what the what it re, here's why it reminds me of of a drug it's got similar characteristics to a drug because here's what happens with drug abuse or alcohol abuse People use the drug or the alcohol, and it makes them feel terrible, and yet they keep using it. You know yeah. what I mean? If you, ever, if you ever met anybody that has a problem with drugs, from the outside, you think to yourself, just stop. Obviously, the alcohol is killing you, your liver is whatever. You feel like shit, yet you keep drinking. Why don't you just stop? It makes you feel like shit. I feel like social media and, and our technology tends to do that. Like, mm -hmm. I know it's making me feel negative. I know it's making me feel disconnected, and yet I'm drawn to it. You yeah, know? The negatives far outweigh the positives. I mean, I just don't see the the positive aspect. Like, it's not as as glaring as it might have been going into it. It's like, oh, I could I could talk to all these people and like connect with my friends and this. Like, it's just bombarded with with like negative opinions now. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, I read an interesting study on supplements the other day another one of those uh investigative kind of reports and this is just you know the supplement industry is going to they're going <laughs> to they're going to push regulators to just hammer down on them so they did a, a a huge test on a bunch of nootropic smart supplement companies oh, wow what did they find out well what they found was a majority of them had illegal uh, drugs in their <laughs> products oh, wow. so yeah. many of them had some of these racetem uh type of chemicals in them or traces of methamphetamines. Um, almost none of them had what they said they had or the doses that they said they had. Wow. So it's like one of the number one thing, here's one of the most important things you could do when you buy supplements because this market, it is unregulated, which I'm okay with, but it does place more responsibility on the consumer. And I think it's the one of the number one things you should do when you buy a supplement is to ensure it doesn't have stuff in it that doesn't say it has, or it doesn't have illegal things in it, doesn't have dangerous things in it, and that the label is accurate. I think that that is the priority number one, because this is now what? Like the fifth study that I have brought up on the podcast. Remember the one with protein powders where they found them? Uh, heavy metals. Heavy metals, and, yeah. testosterone boosters with uh, Viagra in them and other compounds. That was another one that I had read. <laughs> right. Now there's this smart one, you know, smart drugs that have all these other. And if you have like a heart condition or, you know, yeah. maybe you have and, and you think, oh, this is safe because the bottle says it has these ingredients. 
you have no idea that it's got stuff in there that might be. Yeah, that's the real concern. Right? That's or, or you take something that you get tested for later, and then you test you know positive for or something. Like now, that, do you so. see this as a as a negative thing on in the supplement space, or do you see this as a positive thing that opens the doors for more companies like you know like a, like someone like our friend Mike, right? So. He's he is somebody who it prides himself on on like the way he he comes about his formula his the dosage dosages right and so and then he has a podcast to support his business and he's got books and everything and so I feel like we're moving away from these big you know massive companies that are just always looking to figure out how to make profits and if it means you know doing things in the gray area to make sure they can make more money to finding brands that you can identify with the owners and then and feel that they trust who they are because you kind of feel like you know who they are. It is worth it to invest in a company. If you buy supplements and you use supplements on a regular basis, it's wor- it's so worth it to go with a company that has third-party testing that's consistent that you can request that takes pride in putting uh, in the bottle what they say that's in the bottle that doesn't have harmful you know ingredients in them or heavy metals which is again there was a study with protein powders where heavy metals were through the roof in, in some of these protein powders that's a very big deal of course it opens up the market for it. i mean a company like you just mentioned mike right his company is legion one of our this is one of the reasons why we worked with them because they made such a big deal about that this was like the number mm-hmm. one priority for that company and knowing what we know about all these Reports, which, by the way, this is just this is how the FDA continues to make the case that these that this industry needs to be regulated. Is they pull out right. these reports and these studies, and they say, "Here's one that shows that the, all that you know, eighty percent of these products had nothing in them. Here's another one that shows seventy percent. It's mm-hmm. like every time they do them, it's not one out of ten; it's seven or eight out of ten. It's yeah. the majority of the products that they end up testing. So. As a consumer, you don't want that to happen. It's no, going to make all the prices skyrocket. And, and yeah. not only that, but you won't get a lot of products. You yeah. just won't. You'll get a few products, and you're not going to get some of your favorite. And if you look, if you take supplements, you probably value your health more than the average person. I would assume. I think I don't think that's true across the board, but generally speaking, people who take supplements tend to place health. Uh, higher on the list of priorities than people who don't take supplements. I think that's a that's a pretty safe, uh, you know, opinion to have. So if you do care about your health, then uh, and you're probably somebody that spends a little bit more on quality food and stuff like that. Maybe you buy grass fed meat more often than than not. Definitely the the number one thing on your list of on your check off list list with supplements is does this is this clean. Is it potent? In other words, does it have exactly what it says it has? Does it have any? Has it been tested for stuff that's not good for me? Um, can I request, you know, third-party testing, or can I request to see what those labs look like? Like that should be the number one thing. Then number two is okay. Let's look and see what cool promises they make and formulas and you know whatever they put together. But that's which, a very very big priority. Which one of you guys was talking about the, the the drones that are flying the organs around now? That was me. Yeah. So they're testing out drones to deliver uh, organs for organ transplants because oh, because like right when it happens like that I know that's like you know really essential if you get it like to them in time, yeah, right? They were using commercial flights before, but yeah. because there's been such a, a, a limit on commercial flights because of COVID, it was becoming more difficult to get the organ there in time, and uh, they now they delivered the first one ever by drone, and this is a new. Uh, it looks like a new strategy because now, is that it gets a- there faster, cheaper. You know, and that's important. Isn't that also a very competitive industry? Like, there's a, like a list of people waiting for the like organs. Like, it's not like it's uh, where there's a ton of like overflow. It's like there's people yeah. are waiting oh, for. Yeah. It's highly it's regulated, very, yeah. right? So I feel like that would be get difficult like, to hijacked, yeah, right? Get I feel up like that would be list. something that someone would steal, like right? Oh, you mean like a drone? You yeah, know, you guys drone steal catcher. a kidney? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. I mean, people steal them out of people, right? And like, when you go down, there's like these horror stories of people stealing like- I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Like, I would think stealing it from a drone would be a lot easier than a human body. Dude, how would you steal it from a drone? Have you ever seen a drone fly above your head? There's like- Yeah, how can you track it? They're so high. Their, yeah. yeah. You shoot it with a net. Come on. What, do you, what is this? What do you, what do you know? It's flight pattern. What are you, Batman? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that easy. Yeah, you have you a seen? grappling gun. Dude, my brother has a drone he bought on Amazon, yeah. and he fires that thing up in the sky, and you can't even see it. Oh. You okay, but if you're I'm another, you guys, you another drone that intercepts eagle. it. 
What say what? Hold on. Yeah. You said pet eagle. Pet eagle. It's a falcon that does it. Isn't Is it a falcon? Yeah, yeah it's one of those. I think they train, the, they train the falcons to do it, don't yeah. they? Yeah, dude. That's, <laughs> that's like that's a real. All you need. That's a real thing, right? Don't they do it at like all the sporting events? They did. Yeah, for for the Super Bowl. I remember reading about that for the Super Bowl here. It's at uh, Santa Clara. Uh, they they actually had a real problem with with drones flying over to get footage and all that, and then they sent out the uh, Falcon Force. Wow. So okay. So I would imagine you'd have to know that they're flying in order because. People fly drones all the time, so you'd have to know. Oh, at this time they're going to transport. Well, did you? An I, organ. I saw the right. article you're talking about, and it looks like a it looks like a special drone with a like a special uh, carrying thing on it. It doesn't look like your typical drone your brother got from fucking Target, bro. Yeah. It mm. looks totally different. So it would be pretty obvious. It's not like a, they all look the same. It's like this thing is all white and has a big basket underneath it. It's I mean, like, I guess <laughs> I guess you're not making a bad point if mm. Amazon starts delivering Probably things concern, yeah. by drone and banks start using drones and people start delivering things by drones maybe that there will be a bit of a, a you know black market for shooting them down and stealing well i also of heard course. too a lot of these uh, like the autonomous uh big rigs you know that are going to yeah. come out are, are also going to have drones inside to then deliver packages yes. from the the big rigs i saw that so basically the the big rig drives to the destination pulls over then it opens the top and then bzzz, yeah they, they fly. Can take it out you know drop it off of your porch come back land back into the truck dude insane like this is gonna be our world before we know oh, it speaking of crazy stuff that's ha- have you guys picked up on this yet this is happening on my phone I've never noticed this before if you're having a conversation about something and then you go to Google search yeah. before you finish typing in it is the first thing it's that pops there. up in my what? search now yes no way yeah, when we get off air we'll practice this I'll show you guys I must have did it like five times the other night with Katrina because we were blown away by it yeah. if so you just five guys it's just ordered me a burger <laughs> just gonna say that no way yeah. yes dude it, if you or if you're talking about something okay and your phone's right next to you and then go to Google search it and tell me it's not the for one of the first things that pops up right away dude yeah. are we gonna, as a suggestion yeah. before you even finish typing are it. we gonna live in a world <laughs> <laughs> where we where we we just feel predicted. where we feel like we have free will, we feel like we're making choices, but in reality they're being directed. We're being directed and pointed, and we just don't even know it. Yeah, yeah you know what I mean. I mean, I think we're already like, on that yeah, way. Like, why are you eating that burger? I wanted it. In reality, yeah. no. There was like fifteen yeah. things that they did. We, to make we it. know what you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can relax. Ah, <laughs> oh. I'm scared. First question is from Luke Callahan. What are good ways to phase workouts besides strength and hypertrophy? I'm still stuck in the home gym with limited weight. Oh, man. Some of the best ways to phase your workouts have nothing to do with strength or hypertrophy. I mean, I do want to be clear that you know training uh, appropriately and properly, especially with resistance, is gonna, it's going to contribute to strength and hypertrophy, but you can focus on different things. And the idea with a phase is that it's essentially a small goal, right? So for the next three weeks or four weeks, my small goal is to maximize strength or to build you know, muscle through the pump or hypertrophy. And some of the best ways to phase your workouts are like mobility, movement-based, speed, power-based, uh, work capacity-based. Stability, isometrics, you know, there's a lot of different things that you can go through a phase, like to just focus on, that, on those things instead. And... Yeah, you know, I know you alluded to like it. It, it they're they're not uh, strength or hypertrophy based, but almost any pursuit is going to have some of that carryover, no matter. Oh, what. and and what's great about it is, you know, most people that work out, they are usually interested in both strength and hypertrophy. Mm-hmm. Most people want to build muscle and like to be stronger. Most of those same people don't really think a whole lot about improving their control, their stability, their mobility. Maybe they don't even think too much about increasing their proprioceptive ability, which is kind of knowing where your body is in space. And so they don't focus on those things. They don't really ever phase those into the workouts. And the side effect of that is actually don't get as much strength yeah. and hypertrophy because they all contribute well, are to they, that. Are they alluding to the fact that you could focus more on endurance and also power as totally. like other options, right? So, uh, you know, to really like use those that, that same load, but now move it quickly, do way less reps, like be composed in between. So that's a whole nother way to, uh, you know, address your training and get fast twitch response. Yeah, now one of the, one, I mean, one of the best ways to address kind of everything is to follow maps programs or maps workout programs in succession right so 
if you worked out for the whole year and followed four or five MAPS programs, you're probably going to hit pretty much every phase uh, that you can that you can think of that contributes to athletic performance, muscle building, strength, stability, mobility, all those things. I mean, you you know, you can start with MAPS anabolic and then go to MAPS performance, MAPS aesthetic, and throw and hit or strong anywhere suspension exactly and you're going to work on all these different aspects of uh, of, of your body and what that ends up uh, producing visually at least is a very balanced aesthetic physique you end up developing a very balanced body uh, re- r- dramatically reducing your risk of injury and then you get this kind of strength that is not injury prone I mean, one of the one of the the negatives of only ever focusing on strength and hypertrophy for example is sometimes you tend to develop, you definitely can develop lots of strength that way, but it can be more injury prone. And you see this a lot in strength athletes where they push their bodies with strength constantly and then they get one injury and it's a repeating injury. Like, oh, my back tends to get hurt quite often or my hip now is you know uh, producing problems for me. And that's because they don't really dedicate you know, a three or four or five week period of time on something other than strength and hypertrophy. Next question is from Servo777. What is the best way to grow forearm forearm size? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Justin, tell them how you did it. Yeah, (laughs) just my right arm does. (laughs) Wow. A lot of advice for that. Wow. You know, it's funny. I uh, So, I don't know, maybe two years ago, two, three years ago. So, back when we used to be on the uh, on the YouTube channel, on the Mind Pump YouTube, because we're not really on there that often anymore, but in the beginning, it was only... Back on the YouTuber. Yeah. It was, <laughs> yeah, everyone would say, hey, everyone would tell you, say, hey, YouTubers. Hey, YouTubers. Hey, what's up out there? <laughs> Welcome. I'm your host. I'm Sal old. Stefano. I don't know yeah. what I'm saying. No, it was uh, uh, Adam, Justin, and myself were on there all the time. We were the only people on there. And I, I kept saying I wanted to do a video on training forearms, and everybody's laughing at me. Yeah. No, forearm. Nobody cares about forearm. I'm like, yes, dude, they are. And I know I've seen, like, I've read, actually read surveys, and people, a lot of people are very interested in forearm training. Anyway, it happens to be one of our more popular videos because I think a lot of people are interested in, in developing strong. There's a roundabout way of him saying I'm right. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just an example. Just, just, put it out just there. another example. To how everybody else right. is surprised. Yeah. I wasn't surprised. But to their <laughs> all the doubters, you know, <laughs> sitting next to me. No, you know, for, your, your forearms, you, you know, represent all the muscles that, that have to do with your gripping and strengthening uh, your wrist uh, stability. And honestly, uh, every upper body exercise you do involves your hands yeah. uh, in some way. And if, your hands and your wrists are weak, then you're limited. And oftentimes nowadays, that ha- that tends to be the the weakest link, where someone can't row as much as they, oh, they yeah. can, or they can't press because their wrists are weak. And yeah, and before you give all your advice, because you did a really good video about you know all the different techniques you can do, uh, we did have a lot of ideas for this in our MAPS OCR program oh, yeah. and where we actually had, this is where we got to get a little creative uh, because it was so dependent on grip strength and also uh, like barbell or uh, 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 like hanging and doing like climbing and, and all kinds of stuff because it's obstacle courses. Um, we had some fun with that. And so we added things like the rice bucket. Uh, we added some some towels in there to grip, to do pull-ups and did hanging uh, for, for time and all kinds of stuff like that that are really good for building up forearm strength. There's some other things. That, I mean, when I when I look back at like, because uh, I remember being a, a young kid that was focused on this and doing a lot of like like forearm exercises, like direct exercises. And I, I did not see as much gains in my forearm as I did when I was just doing like heavy loaded things, like heavy carries mm-hmm. or heavy deadlifts or pull-ups. Like those exercises put so much demand on grip strength that your forms just na- they have to build as you progress in that. If you progress in your deadlift and you can get you get you see that weight go up, mm-hmm. naturally the forearms just come up with that. The same thing when your pull-ups, if you get to a point where you can start to load weight on your body and pull your body weight up, the forearms just naturally grow with that. Well, that's that. just always been my argument of why I try my best to avoid like wrist wraps and, and things that there are aids in 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 holding things because like you do want to be able to build the muscle uh you know like up in uh, your back and in your biceps but you also want to be able to develop other muscles that are supporting cast uh, at the same time and uh you know to really uh, uh to add like wrist wraps and things like that a lot of times you create dysfunctions as a result yeah and if you look at the like different muscles in the body it starts to become a little clear that some muscles are more suited to stabilize and hold 
or hold tension, whereas other muscles are more suited to flexing and extending. Okay, so like uh, biceps, um, pretty good at extending and flexing. Um, the muscles of the forearms, uh, they do that too, but they're really good at static type of stuff. I mean, Adam, you talked about how great, how, how much you developed your forearms by doing lots of heavy holds. Yeah. I mean, the, the forearm muscles, especially the gripping ones, they're really well suited uh, to do that. So like farmer carries, excellent exercise for the forearms. But also consider this, train different static ranges of motion when you're training your hands. For example, holding a barbell you may be getting strong in that particular diameter of barbell. Try getting a fatter barbell, wrapping a towel around the barbell, pinching and holding a flat plate. That's a great one where you you walk with plates with your fingers in this kind of pinched flat position. That strengthens them differently. Then you could do traditional forearm building exercises like wrist curls. One of my favorite exercises is I put a barbell behind my back, my hands close together and they're kind of the back of my hands are resting on my glutes and then I curl up as far as I can to get the front of the forearm and then for the other side of the forearm um, I like to do reverse curls one of the best exercises I've ever done for the like the brachioradialis uh, and the top of the forearms and they will develop they build like any other muscle you just have to place a little bit of focus on them and if you're trying to figure out where to put forearm training in your workouts I like to do them after uh, back or biceps they seem to pair pretty well with those two two areas next question is from janky garage gym any tips to get a back pump i have uh i have this thing that i used to do that um i if i'm like really wanting to get my back like pumped that works like a charm every time i do this and that's i'll go do four or five sets <clears throat> of heavy deadlifts so i like to do this where i'm i'm working either triples or a five by five type of a routine and then right after I'm done with my deadlifts, I go over to a lap pull down and I do about four sets of lap pull down. If you go do that uh, and get back to me, I promise you it'll be one of the, the most massive back pumps you've ever had in your life. I've, I've paired tons of different exercises together and, and, and tried them in different orders. Nothing seems to give me uh, as, as big of a back pump as doing heavy deadlifts fall by lap pull down right afterwards gives me a massive yeah, pump. You know, the back is a, probably one of the more difficult areas to get a pump for people, but I think it's because they don't connect well. They yeah. don't see the muscle squeezing, mm -hmm. and they do a back exercise, and they end up working, feeling it more in their biceps. Um, anytime you have an issue with a muscle getting a pump, in my experience, it tends to be more of a, an, uh, an issue with connecting yeah. to that muscle. So slow your reps down. Focus on the squeeze. The squeeze is where you'll start to connect. So if you're doing a row, go lighter than you normally would. When you bring the bar to your midsection or the dumbbell up in a row or a cable row, squeeze back and really squeeze those back muscles and hold that squeeze for about three to five seconds and then go to the next rep. That can really help. Uh, another thing you do is do a, a pre-exhaust superset where you do an isolation movement before a compound movement. So one of my favorites is a dumbbell pullover to a pull up or a pull down and I do that one after another so I go I go pull over I do my reps I go straight to the pull down or the pull up and then I rest that's uh, a great way to start to feel those muscles connect and, and get that pump yeah a lot of times going back to your connection point uh, I would find with my clients too that wouldn't be able to feel in their back it is pretty tricky especially if you don't have good shoulder mobility and uh, connectivity there even to the shoulder blade and so uh, for me to to go through some like scapular circles and really start to train, uh, you know, them how to to set, you, you know, their posture correctly in order to even allow for, you know, your lats to, or your rhomboids to get more involved uh, in each one of those uh, movements is, is crucial. And, you know, to go into something like a lat pull down where I'm now driving my chest up, I have to be able to have like a nice expansive open chest uh, for me even to have the opportunity of feeling it in my back. This is why I love the heavy deadlift is for the exact it case. It turns on the whole back. It turns it? on the entire back. So if you're somebody who has a hard time feeling your back muscles, but you have good form deadlift, if you could deadlift with good form, that requires that you keep a stable spine through the movement. In order to stabilize a spine and pull 100, 200, 300 plus pounds off the ground, it wakes up every entire muscle in the entire back. 
So that's why I like that is it wakes it up. You can't help but already start to feel every muscle in your back by doing heavy deadlifts. And then you go over to, you know, an isolation type of exercise like a lap pull down. And that and because the, the deadlift targets a little bit more the lower back, like the erector spinae, then you go over to the lap pull down. You just get this whole full massive pump that just fills that used to be that's always been one of my favorite combos. De deadlifts to pull ups. Love yeah, that. I've done it for a long time. Next question is from Jilly Bean 390 How often would you have to mix up cardio for your body not to adapt? Or does your body consider it all the same over time? You know, my answer to this depends on whether or not you only do cardio or you do resistance training as the foundation of your workout, okay? Because if you just do cardio, um, then it is important to switch different cardio modalities to avoid overuse injuries or imbalances because each form of cardiovascular activity involves some kind of repetitive motion over and over again that looks the same, right? So if you're biking, you're in a, a biking position and your legs are moving the same after every single time you, you do a, a cycle uh, on your bike or if you're running or you're doing a Stairmaster or a rower, the form looks the same and you're doing thousands and thousands of reps uh, building endurance and that can develop uh, or, or it can lead to the development of imbalances and overuse injuries. And so whenever they've you know done studies on athletes, on endurance athletes, cross-training helps prevent that. Because then what happens is you're still training stamina, but you're training different movement patterns. So if you go from like running to rowing, you're using different recruitment patterns for each movement, and you're less likely to develop you know imbalances. If the cornerstone of your workout is resistance training, because remember, resistance training, if you do it right, you're training the whole body. You're training all movements. You're making the whole body strong. It doesn't really matter. Now it doesn't really matter. Now if you're a form of cardio. You can choose whatever it is. Keep doing it. As far as adapting is concerned in terms of calorie burn, you can make an argument, but I think we're splitting hairs when we when we get there. Well, there's actually there's actually studies around this um, that I, I remember reading a long time ago, but it very, was very interesting to me. And uh, if I recall, it was like, the average person adapts to whatever cardio modality they're doing within about two weeks. It doesn't take very long for the body to get very... Now, adapt doesn't mean all of a sudden you stop burning calories. It just means it gets very efficient at whatever you're doing. Changing up uh, the type, like from running to Stairmaster to swimming to rowing to rope type exercises will help. But overall, your cardio endurance is going to improve in all of those, and therefore the body will adapt and get good at it. So... That is a, this is another reason why I always make for the case for cardio to be the last thing that we start to add into a, a routine to if we're using it to lose body fat. If you're doing it for heart health, like bio, it doesn't matter, right? Well, you want to adapt. You want to be good at it. You want to have a strong heart. You want to be good at doing cardio. But if you're doing it for fat loss reasons, the body gets used to it and becomes very efficient at it really quick. And so if you're designing a weight loss or a fat loss program for yourself or for somebody, cardio is something is the last place that I want to go. I want to manipulate my training routine and my food first and use all the tools in my tool belt to get this person to change their uh, their physique. And then at the very end of their, you know, where we're peaking, when we're almost to like their, their ultimate physique or to their goal, I throw in cardio the last two to four weeks tops because of this reason, because the body will get so efficient at it. And then the only place to go is to just keep adding more time. And that's just an unrealistic place for most people to keep going. Like if you've been doing, if you started a fat loss routine for eight weeks, let's say, and you right away introduce cardio one hour a day, that first two weeks or so, you're going to see the initial results from that. And then the other six weeks, you're not going to see much movement from that cardio. And even if you're switching up all the different modalities, you're not going to see it move the needle very much. Then the only thing that you can do in that world to really start to see the movement is to add more time. Right, right. And then you're at an hour and a half and two hours. And that's just ridiculous for most people to maintain that for the rest of their life. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of like from an athletic perspective, like I would take some athletes and we would, uh, we would experiment and, and, uh, go through phases of different types of cardio. And, uh, you know, one, we would focus more on elevation. So we do, uh, like, like hill sprints for instance, uh, versus like on a level playing field. Uh, and then sometimes we do it for timed uh, bouts where it would go, we try and simulate like uh, the, the time of the length of the game play that would actually occur. And so um, just to get them like up, 
you know, in, in terms of like being able to have the durability and uh, in, endurance uh, to compete at the highest level, uh, you know, in their, in their respective sports. So, you know, th- I mean, there's ways to like manipulate cardio and, and make them uh, applicable towards uh, a specific goal you have, if it's sports related for sure, uh, in terms of fat loss and all that, what the guys said, uh, the guys have already said is, is pretty much on point. Yeah. Now, you know, when, when Adam refers to efficiency, you know, your body also aims at getting efficient when you lift weights, it just becomes efficient at getting stronger the side effect of which is burning more calories. When your body gets efficient with cardio, it actually learns to burn less calories because your body getting better at cardio means it doesn't need much strength because it's endurance-based, and it's trying to conserve the amount of calories you burn while you're doing it because cardio is such a calorie-intensive endeavor. With resistance training, the main uh, signal you're sending is to get stronger. So your body still gets efficient. It's just the efficiency is let's get these muscles to be able to lift this weight better and easier, um, a.k.a. get stronger, side effect of which being more calorie burn. But yeah, if, if all you do is cardio and you're an endurance athlete, um, well, number one, I'd say you should probably do some resistance training to offset some of the overuse stuff that you're doing. But if you don't want to do that and you just want to do cardio, yeah, mixing it up will help prevent some of that. It'll help you prevent your risk of injury and help you maintain your, your training intensity. If the cornerstone of your routine is res- resistance training, there really isn't that big of a need to, to to mix up your cardio. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on YouTube as well, so you can come watch the podcast if you want to see what we look like. Um, you can also find all of us on Instagram. You can check out Doug at Mind Pump Doug. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. So this is what we've observed training clients, is that people who don't plan breakfast – um, and again, break fast, meaning the first meal of the day. So this could be in the morning, it could be in the afternoon, but essentially the first meal of however many meals you're going to have throughout that day. People who plan it um, are more thoughtful. 